that's very misleading to the patients. Ladies and gentlemen, it's that time again to make a controversial YouTube video. It's never fun making a controversial video, but it's gotta be done. We need to talk about these really important issues in medicine and healthcare. I'll do my best not to offend people. I'll approach this as delicately and as PC as I can, but I mean, let's be real, it's 2023. Now, why am I making this video? You may point to the fact that if you look at my big five personality traits, my agreeableness is not very high. I'm okay being disagreeable. That's just my personality, but that's not the main reason. The main reason is because I remember when we were first starting MSI, like we grew to a substantial size even in 2017 at the very beginning. And I felt like I had a responsibility because there aren't that many people, especially at that time, that had a sizable audience on YouTube that were discussing medicine, medical school, medical training, and healthcare. And I felt like, how can I say that people need to be discussing these important issues more if I have a platform and yet I'm not discussing it? So it was very much a point of just ethical considerations, morality, what is the right thing to do? And I felt like I have a responsibility because I have the opportunity to speak about this that I should. And I'm proud that over the years, we have stuck to the truth as being our guiding principle, even more so than business optimization or profit or anything like that, it's the truth. So we will make videos that uh, may even be counter to some business interests, things like, hey, don't go to medical school, right? Or talking about things that may not make the most sense from a business perspective, but it's because that highest level value is seeking the truth and educating the public and cutting through the nonsense and saying, hey guys, these are the facts and we wanna do this in the most objective and nuanced way possible. There is one regret, which is on the Med School Insiders channel, we made a video about MDs versus DOs and 100% objective. And when I watched that video, I stand by it completely. And I even remember before releasing it, passing it by some DO colleagues of mine, some friends that were in med school or residents to make sure that everything I was saying was factually correct, was not offensive, et cetera, et cetera. And they gave me the green light. But of course, what was it, 2018, 2017, something like that, people got offended. And with that large backlash, I made an apology video on this channel, which I have since taken down, but that apology video said, hey, I didn't handle this thing in the most sensitive way. And I thought it was the right thing to do because I felt such a backlash, but I regret that because I should have just, you know, stood my ground and said, no guys, this is an objective and 100% accurate video. And if these facts are distasteful to you, it's likely because you are extrapolating some meaning from those facts that I'm not placing there, but that you take offense to. Okay, so the reason I'm making this video is because a buddy texted me asking me, hey, have you made a video on DMSC? Which I said, no, I haven't, great idea. Now, for those who don't know, DMSC stands for Doctor of Medical Science. And it's, think of it as the PA profession's degree to blur the line and earn the title doctor because, I mean, this points to a larger issue in mid-levels, right? So even the term now mid-levels has been misconstrued to be something that's offensive. But take a step back and actually think, why is that the case? Because mid-levels points to the fact that they are not as robustly trained as physicians, but they definitely have far more knowledge than RNs or other ancillary staff. But essentially NPs and PAs have been pushing that mid-level, the term is offensive because it diminishes our training and we are equivalent providers to physicians, to MDs and DOs, which is simply not true. When you look, again, objectively at the level of training, the clinical hours, the, I mean, there, there's no single point in the training process that makes them equivalent to physicians. But a lot of these efforts are designed to blur the line to confuse the public. I mean, even for us who are in medicine, it's confusing, there's all these new degrees and everything's just changing constantly. Imagine being the public, someone who is not medically trained, you're gonna go to the, the clinic, the hospital, and not know who is your provider, what are their credentials? And when you see NP versus PA versus MD, you may think that they're all equivalent based on the lobbying efforts of mid-levels. Now, some would say, hey, this is just a vocal minority of mid-levels that are really pushing for this. And most of us mid-levels know that, look, we don't have the same training. We don't want that same responsibility. But the newer generations, they're being indoctrinated. This is actually occurring top down from the, the organizations that lead and run these groups. They're telling the new trainees that, hey, you are equivalent. And it's really the Dunning-Kruger effect in action. So they don't know so much, yet they think they have a high level of expertise. It's one of those instances where you don't know what you don't know. So there are things you know, there are things you know that you don't know, but there's a whole larger subset of information, which is what you don't know that you don't know. So the question becomes, okay, well, why blur the line? Why, why do mid-levels not wanna be perceived as mid-levels? 
and be perceived as more equivalent to physicians. It comes down to money, primarily. So by blurring the line and claiming more and more responsibility, they can actually increase their value to the healthcare system, at least their perceived value, and be compensated at higher rates. Because if you're doing the same thing as a physician, same responsibilities, same tasks, et cetera, and you're charging a lower rate, you're still making way more than you would be previously as a mid-level. You can now approximate and get closer to a physician income. And the line is being blurred in so many different ways. So if you look at the PA term, physician assistant, they're now trying to make that physician associate one way to blur the line. If you look at NPs getting their DNP degree, so they can call themselves doctor, right? But what is the actual credentialing? How robust is that? Let me give you a hint. It's actually very flexible and very concerning uh, what is necessary to get your DNP. And we talk about that much more in depth in this video up here on the Medical Insider channel. But that's another way to just blur the line. Because now with my doctorate, I can call myself doctor. Using that in the clinical setting is intentionally misleading to patients. Because patients are thinking, well, they call themselves doctor, they must be an MD or a DO. When in reality, they're a nurse practitioner and they should not be calling themselves a doctor in a clinical setting. That's very misleading to the patients. A counterpoint that comes up from mid-levels is that, hey, we have so much experience as an RN or as a PA or whatever, we're going to learn over the years and be just as well-trained or even better trained than someone coming out of medical school or residency, to which I would disagree. The problem is that their experience is more pattern recognition. It's one thing to view something again and again and again. It's one thing to be calling the shots and have to, having to understand the actual underlying pathophysiology. Because they're not understanding the pathophysiology at the same depth and complexity as a physician, when a rare or complex case presents itself, that's when you really see their training fall apart. Now, I should take a moment to clarify that I think NPs and PAs, they provide value to the healthcare system when they are serving their intended and designed role. But when things get dangerous is when they attempt to expand their scope of practice beyond what they're actually trained to do. So here's an analogy, it's not perfect by any means, that illustrates the point of intentional training versus observation. If I took you to the racetrack and I put you in the passenger seat of a race car and I drove around the track and I showed you the lines and the brake points and you got hundreds, thousands of laps observing me, you would know what the racing line is, you would know all your brake points, you would know a lot of the nuances of how to make a car go fast around a racetrack. But until you sit in that driver's seat, until you are the one who is actually doing it, you're never gonna have the same level of expertise from observing versus actually experiencing and doing. By the way, if you like cars, check out my newest car channel, Jabal and Cars. So again, perhaps not a perfect analogy, but what I'm trying to illustrate here is the fact that you cannot simply observe and use that observation, years of observation, to argue you have the same level of training or expertise as someone who is actually doing. Now, if you go to PA school, if you go to NP school, if you are training in these defined roles in healthcare, more power to you. But if you want to call yourself doctor in a clinical setting, it's simple. It's not easy, but it's simple just go to medical school. One thing that I find quite illogical is that to argue that mid-level training is equivalent to physician training, when they have such disparities with regards to clinical hours, rigor, uh, the entry requirements and selection process, et cetera, it doesn't quite make sense. You, In order to make that argument, you would also have to assume that the physician training process is incredibly wasteful or that those who enter medicine and medical school are not nearly as intelligent or uh, quick to learn as those who enter the mid-level programs, which objectively you just can't say because the barriers to entry, the standards for getting into medical school, they're far more challenging than getting into these mid-level programs. And again, this is no judgment to someone's value, right? But the objective truth is that to get into medical school, you need higher GPA, you need a higher standardized test score uh, comparatively, right? So you can look at the actual percentile uh, because you know, for NP and PA, you're not necessarily taking the MCAT, right? It's much more rigorous to get in, and even the training itself is much more rigorous. So you need to make some pretty significant assumptions to ever assume that the training is the same. And those assumptions are pretty far-fetched, that again, medical students, residents, physicians, that those who enter the MD or DO pathway are not nearly as intelligent, or that their training is insanely wasteful, because the number of they're, they're training several times more in terms of the number of clinical hours alone compared to mid-levels. But even the clinical training is much more robust. Things like learning the actual pathophysiology before you even get to the clinical part. I wanna show you some examples here of the lines being blurred. And some of these are, they're surprising. I mean, I was surprised when I saw this. So here's, a, here's an example from a university's Twitter page where you know they're calling all these trainees, Dr. So-and-so, right, as, as PAs. Here's one where this is a Reddit post with, with chief PA residents. Now, 
A chief resident is in their last year of training. Okay, so in a medical residency, which lasts at least three to seven years, depending on your specialty, it's your final year. So actually in internal medicine, it's a three-year residency and you can do an optional chief year, a fourth year as well. In this example, there are chief PA residents, which is an 18 month residency, which makes them not only residents, but chief residents at that, which is interesting. A lot of these DMSC programs, these doctor of medical science programs, they're geared more towards leadership than actual clinical skills too, which makes the title of doctor in a clinical setting even more inappropriate. Here's another example of a doctor of medical science program, which has the same curriculum as a doctor of health sciences. So some courses include organizational strategies for interprofessional healthcare leadership, the professional as researcher and writer, healthcare operations management, policy, regulation, and politics in healthcare, and the list goes on. Again, one year, 100% online, and not really focused on honing someone's clinical skills. Now here's another comparison table we found, which is incredibly misleading. They make it seem that a MD is far less rigorous and has fewer prerequisites compared to the, uh, the DMSC program. So under prerequisites, they say none, which I have no idea how they're getting that there are no prerequisites to even enter medical school. Medical school has arguably the most intense and rigorous prerequisites out of any of these healthcare training paths. Uh, whereas for DMSC, they talk about anatomy, physiology, microbiology, uh, chemistry, statistics, etc. And it's not just patients who are getting confused, even students who are interested in a career in healthcare, but they're not sure which path is right for them. Even they're saying like, here's an example comment where the student says, overwhelmingly, as I try to think of which career I want to do, I see the gap between NP slash PA and MD slash DO closing as they push for more independence. Are you saying that the training is the same or is there still a difference in a hierarchy in training? Now I know I'm not alone in understanding the importance of this issue. And there's a very active community on Reddit that discusses a lot of these issues. There's the PPP, the Physicians for Patient Protection, and they talk a lot about this. But I think it's important to have this discussion. It's important to, again, it's not us versus them, right? It is a collaborative effort where we can work together, but we need to also speak to the truth. We, we don't need to say that everyone is equal because in terms of training, they're not equal. If you want to be a doctor in the clinical setting, then just go to medical school, you can do that. But don't tell others, don't tell patients, don't tell students who are looking at career options that NP and PA is equivalent to MD in terms of training, in terms of rigor, in terms of anything like that. For some students, going the mid-level path is gonna be a better fit for them. And for other students, going the physician route is a better fit. We discussed that in a Med School Insiders video up here, and there are links to additional videos as well as additional resources in the description. Much love, my friends. Let's have a respectful and cordial discussion down in the comments below, and I'll see you guys in the next one.